Okay, we should be live now, hypothetically, if I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, hey everyone, so Laz, as advertised, and all the pings and all the tweets and also the previous stream, uh, Derek is going to teach us how to fight like a hamster, right Derek? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, uh, I mean, teach? I mean, teach through a video, I, I, I'm not sure, but, but uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Any, I think anyone can fight like a hamster. Hey again, Kate Monster. So we have a couple people in the chat, so I might shout out to them um, as we're talking. What's up, Wendy? I might, I might be actually able to fight like a hamster. I'm in perfect shape. I'm round. I have a lot of body hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what we're working with is um, over the weekend, Derek got some footage of him doing some of uh, Pim's special moves. So we're going to kind of go through it slowly and get his take on what they what they look like. Um, if you have any technical terms to throw at us, Derek, those are also welcome. Mm. If you want to put it in like real word, real world words for kung fu or uh, any other kind of martial arts, that's sure, like, sure. totally yeah, encouraged. I mean, the, the, the technical terms are in. I, I only know so in Cantonese. In, you can Chinese. you can say them in <laughs> Cantonese or Chinese. Say them gotcha. say them a little little slower. So that it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, say, yeah. Say it for white people. Say it for Very... white people. Okay. Say it for ah, me. Okay. Say it for me and Wendy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like think mayonnaise. <laughs> think untouched wall. All right. So. so yeah. So let's start at the beginning, right? Um. um do you remember, Derek, what the first move is? Yes. Yes. So the first. So the first set is is a Pim's um seven hit combo. That's like his core combo that when um when when you get a chance to just you know freely attack um he'll he'll dish out this seven hit combo and there's another combo um that's like uh five hits to change things up but this is his core combo um and you'll have to remind me who animated this end of him i did you did okay perfect <laughs> yeah, yeah I, so... I, I did mo i did about uh like like 95 percent of the animation in this game all right, so, so even like the enemies and stuff like that, yeah, yeah. it was a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. How long did it take it you? It was a lot of fun. Or how long have you been uh, animating, say, the fighting part of the game rather than idle uh, and uh, we... out of Connecticut? I mean, I mean, this was a side project um, that that we just kind of that I just kind of worked on the animation for, like, you know, when, whenever I got a uh, some some downtime at at Muse Games. Um, it's it's been it's been a few years. Sounds great. As a side project, and then the last year or so, we focused on it. All right, so let's so, take a yeah. look together real quick. Okay. And I'm gonna have to quickly pause and unpause because we're doing this kind of jerry-rigged on YouTube right now. All right, so. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I want to so... go through it just a little bit slower, real quick. Sure. So in the meantime, Derek, like, introduce yourself, like, the full-on game. Like, your name is Derek Chow. You've yes. been with Muse Games for how long? For about 10 years now. Um, it was, it was wow. my first uh, job in this industry. I started as an intern um, after graduating from, from School of Visual Arts to study animation. And, uh, but I studied traditional animation, actually, like hand-drawn stuff. Um, but then I started messing with Maya, um, and, uh, you know, I took some I extra classes. Maya. What's that about? Maya? Uh, I mean, I mean, Maya is one of the, <laughs> is, is, is one of the few, um, 3D programs that are commonly used, either Maya or 3ds Max. Maya, Maya especially is, is, um, is a little better for, for doing animation. Uh, 3s max is a little more you know for for modeling and that kind of stuff more and more uh, general stuff but um art but uh, muse games uses uh, exclusively Maya and you know zbrush of course but mostly Maya mm -hmm. um, and so I started as an intern there and did you um, sorry for interjecting did you start out yeah. in New York yes 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 I grew up in New York oh, okay in the suburbs of New York and then I came okay. to the city to, to uh, for uh, college. All right, so let's walk through this video 
one more time with you, and then I want you to kind of explain to me what's going on. Yeah, because there's a lot. There's so much. <laughs> Yeah. So we have right. like so, a yeah. So what's happening there? We have two hits already. So there's a there's an upper so it starts with an uppercut, and then a downward hook, and then and then a roundhouse kick. No, that's not a roundhouse kick. That's a spin kick. <laughs> spin move. I mean, so 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 the form of kung fu that that, that I that I study is is Wing Chun. Uh, we don't do any spinning attacks. We, we, we have a low roundhouse kick, but that's about it for spinning. Um, it's it's very I mean I mean it was uh, it was created by a woman um, supposedly, and and so all the moves are very direct, straight, and uh, economical. You know something for for a smaller um, fighter to to take down less flare, people. more scare. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, like very straight. You know, no, no wasted effort, kind of thing. Um, no show up. No peacocking. Yeah, and it, and it's, and it's usually defense first. Like, like defense is the priority. Um. Mm -hmm. So, so doing doing these spinning moves was not really, really down my alley. But, but I know that for a small, um, character like him, um, it has to be more more circular movements for for him to for his movements to read uh, when, I, when i first started this project pep, pep <laughs> also <laughs> gravity he's, he's, also he's, doesn't he's apply to pep so this, these spinning effort. moves might help him maneuver yes, yes yes since he since he does not abide to the laws of gravity so maybe this is necessary for him right right so so when i first started these um these uh, attacks. When I, when I first started this project, I was like, okay, he's a smaller guy. I should use Wing Chun. You know, it's, it's good for smaller guys. But the thing is, for video games, it doesn't read. So, right. so I had to add a lot of, you know, spinning, spinning, and you know, big moves that that have readable silhouettes. And so, so, so most of his um, core core combo is is these uh, spinning attacks. I, I did throw in some uh, some some straight some powerful straight attacks to like break up the rhythm. You'll see, so coming up that that kick, and then the ender that double pawn strike. That's that's Wing Chun. The kick is very very straight, and the punch is Wing Chun. Yes, yes. The double palm strike at the end is 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 Wing Chun. Um, I mean, a lot of styles have you know double palm strikes. Uh, to, to like you know and is to, it a uh, like is it a palm stun. strike or a powerful push uh both okay both uh it depends on how you use your energy uh, with with wing chun specifically though um you keep your weight in the back leg so that so that you don't lean forward and then possibly if you, if you miss when, when you're leaning forward you could you're, you're actually very vulnerable so we always keep our weight in the back all right, so and, that you could fall back on your leg and kind of like secure your position rather than being unbalanced. And is right, this right, palm and then push, also keeping your face away from your opponent. This palm oh, push is right. used as, as kind of the end of the combo. Is that how you might use a palm push in Wing yes. Chun? So yes, it's yes. kind of a uh, like a pseudo or a meta disengage to allow your next strikes to build. You're kind of right. just distant, um, a little bit of distance. Yes, exactly. All right. Um, let's see what we have next, quickly. We'll watch that okay. one more time and just let it lead to the next video. I see you didn't do the uh, backflip that Penn did in zero seconds. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I can't flip. <laughs> neither, neither can Wendy or I. <laughs> I mean, I flip plenty of times, never on purpose. Oh. Yeah, so the next thing, the next part is, oh, here just, oh, so the next part is, um, is the counter for the, for the weasel's, um, low level rush. So, so he's like flying at you. I mean, it's in slow motion, but he's like flying at you face forward. And so, use so I decided to use, face. yes, yes, so Perfect. I decided to use an elbow since it's strong enough to, 
stop an opponent's momentum. And actually, that that elbow strike is also Wing Chun, um, called uh, Pai Zan. Pai Zan. That's that's one of the three elbow strikes that we have. So Do we straight, have straight other elbow strikes in the game, or did we just choose to use the uh, that one? That's that's the only elbow strike in the game. Yeah. And what do we call it? Python. Python. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only that's, pronounce that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so well. All right, let's watch it one more time. So we elbow strike him in the face and just smash yep. him. Smash him down, and then and then, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, I watched a lot of Bruce Lee movies growing up, so so I did a little. Yeah. You know, Bruce Lee style hook at the end. Wow, cinematic! I like it. That that last move really does seem a little bit more cinematic than practical, and I absolutely dig it. Was it right, a right. practical with the, with deployment, the... or was it a little bit of like a homage to Bruce Lee? A little bit of it, it's, it's both. Um, I want you know you know a chance for like the. For the player to like see him's face so, so so i'll usually try to like like add some flair like that to the end of a combo because usually in games you don't you don't have like like the frame or like the time to to, to add like flair like that but at the ending of of uh animations you can you can add that kind of stuff not usually in the beginning because you want um because because you want the game to react right away but yeah yeah, so I added at the end. All right. Yeah, so this next move is <laughs> is to ex is the execute the um, KO attack for for the mouse. Um, that's that's, my that's like straight oh out my of. Goodness. Yeah, that's like straight out of Enter the Dragon. I, I love that you get the little. Step ladder out just to like oh, help sorry. us. By the like, tail. Really that, that step ladder is super dangerous. I actually I kicked <laughs> it. I, I like um it like flew uh from from uh beneath my feet a couple times and was laying on my head. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now since we're yeah. real quick, since we're on the topics of satisfying uh enders, I have to just say that my favorite one is with the weasel. And just like multi stomping him into the ground after oh. you KO him. I right, don't think right, right. I don't think you got a recording of you like tap dancing a weasel into the ground, but if we were yeah, to have yeah, the footage up do that. <laughs> if yeah, we yeah, were to have the footage up, uh what kind of what kind of real to world translation is that? Is there the um the uh the KO attack for the weasel? Yeah. I feel the KO like attack for the weasel. I feel like I've seen maybe a YouTube video where, you know, flair and dramatic kung fu was the whole thing and someone, you know, tap danced someone else midair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cuz surely yeah, that's it's also not very, too effective. Very, uh, like those like like the wire foo kind of thing. Yeah. Um uh those those kind of moves they'll they'll like, you know, they're, they're like suspend the air and they they actually have the time to you know, threw out like five kicks at once while they're in the air. So, yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have time to do that in real life. I, I like jump off a chair. You know, Maybe next the, time. Uh, next clip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's on the next clip where, where I jump off a, where, where I jump from out of screen and I, and I try to throw out, uh, three kicks, but I only threw out like two. <laughs> but um, I mean, I mean, with this one, I was mostly. This this was the first um, KO attack that that I attempted, um, and that was for the weasel, and I really wanted like some some way to, like close that large distance between um, him and, and and the opponent because because this is meant to you know be directed on anyone on the field. Right. So so it's meant yeah, it's so, meant so for I you to be able to wire foo across the entire uh, playing field here and just. Okay, right. attack anyone that you want. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um. So I, so I wanted to, you know, it had to be like quick. Also, you know, I had to like take the guy down like right away and disable him like right away. 
So, so just, you know, just stomp on him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess in a world where you can stomp on someone midair like that, that absolutely works. Mm -hmm. I think I missed the first part here. Was it? It's just a smash. That was a. That was a. That's a. That's the uh, Shoryuken out of Street Fighter. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so we have so Street Fighter and Bruce Lee. That's the Shoryuken. Uh, that's that's um that's that's like Street Fighter's like uh, Dragon Punch, which which was actually really useful. I use it more than once in this game. Um, it's just an easy way to just like another easy way for to uh, close distance. Um, so with the so if you skip back to the last one with the with the big guy, the the bunny, yeah. So so this was actually the first um, type of these uh, QTEs that I tried to animate, and. And I really wanted to make the um, the input feel intuitive. So, so for the big guy, you you have to swipe up, right? Right. So it. I had the big guy, you know, you know, jump from from up top, and and I had to have him like launch up at him and close that distance. The thing is, once once he was up there, it was a little tricky to get him down. And like at that time, like like I really wasn't sure what what Pim's limits were. But after animating this this specific sequence, I was like, oh, there's there's like really no limits to him. You know, he's he's like a small guy and he's round, but but really like like you know, sky's the limit for him. Quite literally, he goes up like I don't know in real world, it looks like right. 15 feet <laughs> and punches right. the so rabbit all the point, way down. Like the animation started getting crazier and crazier. Yeah. <laughs> So this starts out with uh, a series of blocks, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is the counter. This is actually the um, the timed input sequence for for the weasel's high level rush. And it's a timed input. Um, it's a timed input sequence. So so I so this is actually the that block sequence is actually all Wing Chun. Let's watch it in real time real quick. And uh, which part of your body are you using to block? Are you using your... Are you kicking the objects away? Yeah. Meeting uh, yeah, with... yeah. So, the, so the first one is a... Is a... Is a... Was a hand block. That's, that's called... Um, gum sao. Gum, uh, push... Like like push hand, uh, and so I started out with that, but then afterwards I used the kicks. Oops. So this one right here, it's called what? Gun yeah, so palm. Yeah. Palm. Palm. And then a front kick to the block. Since it's using a weapon, I I try to use mostly kicks, and then side kick. Side kick with the with the hand is, is actually like a, it's it's called like a like a fence hand. <laughs> it's like the translation. Bong sao. Bong sao. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Sorry. literally identical. How did you do that? Yeah. Like how I did think... you like no literally how did you how did you make it time so perfectly with your moves and the animation? Oh well I did, you know, editing. Yeah, but like. But you so... move your body just as fast as Pim does in yeah. many cases. Uh, obviously, not yeah. in places where you have to edit, like when he zips through the air. In right, like right. A millisecond. But, but yeah. do you have like the game playing next to the laptop, kind of like reference off of it? Or did you just know them by heart so well because you animated everything that Pim does? Um, I, I did know them by heart, like while I was animating them, but. Um, recently, no, no, I, I had to just, you know, watch the game. I, I was playing the game. I was like, okay, this, I was like, okay, kick, palm strike, oh, uh, side kick, <laughs> you know? Um, and then, and I rehearsed once and then and broke out the camera. It, I mean, it was pretty crazy because we, we first started, um, we, we just got over rainy season here. So, so in Japan, it's, it's, uh. It's like almost 100 degrees out every day now. Mm -hmm. 
That's so forty-three was, Celsius. Right, right. So it was pretty crazy. I was like, uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. But um, this but this sequence is the uh, last sequence with the with the um, weasel uh, blocking the weasel's rush is uh those 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 moves are are actually you know Wing Chun it's um it's it's made to uh, intercept the attack before before the attack can build full momentum. So this is something that's like actually deployable. Yes, you know, not in real life. So you might would you be using the same extremities? Would you be kicking away the first two or punching away the first one or palming um, away? I would use in, in a in a real sparring situation. I would, I would use mostly hands to block since it's faster. It would be hands, not elbows. I assume you might like break your elbow or your uh, forearm. Uh, both, both, yeah. I mean, um, if I if I use my elbow, then that's if I'm closer range. If I'm a little bit farther, then I'll then I'll use then I'll use my all oh, the blade of the wrist, like like the blade of my forearm. So ideally, it would be hands though, so you can prevent the momentum as fast and as early as you can. Yes. Because I suppose that would be the easier and you know just less force overall. So elbow is obviously not ideal. Correct. Um, I mean, I mean, with each with each blocker with each technique, um, a uh, winter practitioner would would try to close the distance little by little and get closer and closer to their opponent, right. so that you could use elbows. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because um, uh, another you know you know Wing Chun theory is that is that you know typically for for a, for a smaller fighter, um, you can do more damage from closer range than than your than your larger fighter who has you know longer reach can can do to you. If if you're closer to a larger opponent, then they can't hurt then then they can't hurt you as bad. As as they could if you're if you gave them a little bit of distance. If you gave them a little bit of distance, um, they have you know with their long limbs you know and you know uh, larger wind up, they could hurt you more from which, a farther distance. Which uh, makes sense distance. if we're uh, following the theory of um, the word I just forgot, momentum. So it is right. all about you know uh, playing with momentum and making sure you're at the right distance to block or deal more damage considering the momentum yes. that someone from farther away might have is that yes like a fairly basic principle in Wing Chun yes yes I, I, I guess in all martial or, arts or is that Wing Chun or uh, what's so Wing Chun focuses from the standpoint of someone who might be a little smaller or might not have time for a build up right so it is more yeah. of a close range when compared yes. to other martial yes. arts in general yeah and and we actually focus on um developing close range power so where, building where building up the momentum up. a little bit faster or just having a more powerful punch quicker or not relying um, on momentum might be more accurate exactly yeah um it's a uh, short explosive relaxed power like like a whip kind of like um oh oh just like i'm sure you know uh bruce lee's one inch punch yeah that, yep. that's that's Wing Chun. that's the uh, famous famous video from like uh or that was i don't know when when you kids talked about it but that was all over my my school when i was i don't know right yeah yeah that was probably in the a few years ago <laughs> it makes yeah, resurgences yeah, so... every every once in a while whenever when the new uh, generation comes out and first watches one inch punch and then everyone talks about it yep so I mean, I mean, Bruce Lee, his his uh, first martial art was Wing Chun. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Most of JKD is is derived from Wing Chun. So, if we were to pull Pim out of Hamster Fu, would he maybe excel most at Wing Chun? Because most of what he fights is bigger enemies, and lots of Pim's movements are instantly powerful. Because there is yes, no way to build them. That's what I originally thought, but it wasn't very readable. So, I mean, I mean, Pim, Pim is, you know, like kind of like uh, Superman. 
Well, yeah, yes, of course. Magical. Yeah. There is a magical so, side to hamster foo, or at least a perceived one. Right. So, 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 so he does. So Finn does have the luxury to do these, you know, spinning big attacks. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, to make things, you know, make more sense to me while I'm animating them, I will throw in a lot of, you know, my Wing Chun theories and stuff into it. So we would say that uh, if we weren't using terminology for hamster foo, we might say that Pim was a Wing Chun master. Possibly. Possibly. Or, or what I want to believe is that Derek is actually the first hamster foo master. He is <laughs> Pim's long lost parent. You're his biological father, your grandpa. Wait. <laughs> Whatever happened to his dad? I'm really wondering what happened yeah, to his dad. Yeah, it's you. It's you. You're his dad. <laughs> it's canon now. I confirmed yeah. it on the stream. Clip yeah, it yeah like an hour ago, we had uh, Wendy confirming all these canons. Now there's no going back. <laughs> Like, hey, my dad's working remotely. It, it, may have, it may have been a joke yesterday, but today, Derek, you are the father of Pem. In okay. today's world, yesterday's joke is tomorrow's news. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Derek, you are originally from New York. You've been doing martial arts for longer than you have not been doing martial arts. And you just pick up, picked up and went to have a life in Japan, in beautiful, beautiful Japan. So how, how, why, where, what, tell us. Oh, oh, so, um, well, well, my wife is Japanese and okay, we then... met in New York, um, got married, had a kid, uh, a daughter. All of us uh, in, in, New York. in New York? I'm still in New York, we lived in Queens. Ah. And, oh, cool. That's um, where the nanny's from. That's all I know about Queens. <laughs> the nanny? Oh, the nanny. Oh, yeah. I love her. <laughs> that laugh. Yeah, she's beautiful. So how um, long have no, you been doing Wing Chun? And you said that was your first martial arts as well. Do you know any others? Um. Well, I mean, I mean the others that I do know, I mean, I mean, I know um, BJJ. Yeah. Not, not exactly no, too... Not, not, the degree that you oh, know yeah, which time yeah, but you MMA, do right? know some yeah 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 i mean we um so 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 my father specifically uh he he learned traditional wing chun when he came to new york he finds oh there's all these big big you know non-asian people uh and so and so he had to um integrate a lot of other uh Forms, forms of martial arts such as you know um uh jujitsu and you know boxing and uh krav maga um into his wing chun so 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 we actually um in our in our class in in my father's class we actually drill a lot of bjj techniques and and when we spar we we don't we don't stop until if it, if it goes to the ground we we uh continue until someone taps out because it just turns into jujitsu or something else, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's 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 where martial arts is going nowadays. You know, with MMA, obviously, it is very practical. It is, um, I mean, so, that's that's where fights go. Especially, so it's, for, it's more headed from start minute. to finish rather than from uh, once there's a winner or like. A set set pacing where someone wins. It's more from start to finish where someone actually loses rather than when someone wins, doesn't it? Yes. Yep. And and it's very it's very good for you know small guys to know you know ground grappling techniques because I mean I mean the chances are you know person that's going to start up I mean I mean hopefully you don't go around starting fights but <laughs> if you end up in a fight it's it's probably with a bigger opponent. And they're gonna try to take you to the ground, and and you can't. I mean, a lot of Wing Chun people will say, "Oh, I'll, I'll never go to the ground because I'm just too fast, and my and my hand techniques are just just too awesome." But but that's that's Me? never <laughs> that's never the case, and and you, and you see that on these you know online videos where where that where like you know these uh, MMA fighters will challenge these these uh, kung fu masters, 
that that don't know um, jujitsu, and they just get their ass, you know, they they they, you know, they get beat up. Well, that's the whole point um, of kung fu is that it's a more encompassing kind of uh, martial arts for exactly that reason, almost. So, to me, it sounds yeah. like you are like the opposite of a martial arts purist. You like absorb as much as you can, incorporate as much as you can to like build your personal style. Yes. Or, or yes. Unless you're in a competition where you fight by specific rules. Right, right. But right. um. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, another thing that that uh, I mean, my specialty, which is different from my dad's specialty, my my, my dad's specialty, um, oh, aside it's from. Dad, yes. Oh, okay. So, so he he's he's grandpa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's his origin uh, story? Like, uh, what does he do? How long has he been doing Kung Fu? Like, how did you get to Kung Fu through him? Like, I want to hear it all. Okay. Yeah, I guess, oh yeah, it's pretty long. I mean, um, so, so he's originally from Hong Kong. And he started learning in the 60s when he was a teenager. Uh, because there's a lot, you know, you know, in, in the 60s in, the, in Hong Kong, there's a lot of street fighting going on. You know, just, just random street fighting or... You know, between like different groups of kids in Hong Kong, and Still today or when he was young. No, 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 not anymore. Yeah, yeah, in like the scene. Okay. <clears throat> there, you, you'll hear stories about like you know rooftop fights and stuff like that. But so, 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 so he learned Wing Chun. His his mask, his uh, his his sifu was was uh, Uma Sum, which <clears throat> which was a uh, was a disciple of Learn Sern, who was a disciple of. Of of uh, it man, who I'm sure you guys heard of. All those it man movies. Yes. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. It, it <laughs> man. Ip man. Yeah. Ip man. Uh, I P M A N. Ah uh, yes, of course. We're millennials. We can have heard of it in a few the, seconds. The oh. famous. <laughs> The famous 1890, no, uh, Chinese martial artists. Yes, it man. Of course, I'm familiar. Okay. Yeah, black hair. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, so I'm then. Disappointed in me too. Uh, so, 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 so he learned in Hong Kong, and then he became a sifu. And um, in 1972, he actually came to New York City. He actually moved, you know, he, he uh, immigrated to, to New York City. And then he opened the first Wing Chun school in in, in, uh, in uh, New York City in the 70s. And then, um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, and then and then he had me and my brother, my, my older brother. Um, but but he didn't actually teach us until we were teenagers, I think, because because we we're you know, brats, or he thought we were going to cause trouble. Me and me, me and brother was, you know, fighting with each other and stuff. Um, but but I was always interested in martial arts. I was always, I mean, I would always watch, you know, kung fu flicks with my dad. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, yeah. So 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 I started training when I was a teenager. Um, you know, when I went to college, it was kind of like on and off. Uh, but yeah. I mean, I mean, last year I became a, a certified Wing Chun Sifu. Nice. And I have to uh, interrupt one more time. So there is a famous scene from Ip, Ip Man that I'm sure you're familiar with, and probably people in the chat are familiar with, where uh, he uses Wing Chun against 10 karate black belts. Oh, yeah, with uh, played by Donnie Yen. Yeah. Is that a thing that could happen? That's... So, so that's... Uh... That's like, that's like the cliche Wing Chun um, scene. It's a casual you know, attitude, it's like, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, for for some reason, people people that study Wing Chun think that they can fight ten people. Can you fight ten once. people? I don't, I don't think I can fight ten. Karate black belts. Maybe like maybe like ten like elementary school kids. Maybe like five <laughs> of Wendy and five of me. Oh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe after maybe after you guys have had some drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know, but but I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of a, of a ridiculous. Um, I mean, it's obviously karate movie magic, but yeah. 
Right. I mean, I mean, even um, Ip Man's son, um, uh, Ip, Ip Chun, talks about, you know, that that you know, when, when you learn Wing Chun, you shouldn't think like, oh, oh, I can I can fight, you know, multiple people, just like just like Ip Man supposedly did. Um, you know, Wing Chun is first and foremost just self defense and you know, just like well being. Um, so would you say that you could defend yourself against ten karate black belts and run away just long enough? I could. To get I out? could probably, you know. Um, could you get out of? A, yeah, so off. that's accurate. Could you get out of a fight with ten karate black belts? Could or like, do you think they, they, do you think that you could disengage? If I was, if it was like a narrow, if it was a hallway. Yeah. If it was like a narrow hallway. So like yeah, could you could you uh, parry or dodge the first few attacks against ten karate black belts just enough to disengage? Probably. 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 I, I would. I would. I mean. I mean. Running. Running would be my first part. If I, if I saw <laughs> ten dudes that wanted to jump me, I would. I would run for. <laughs> yeah, but, but, um, but good. Like, yeah. Basic survival. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there. Yeah, I mean, um, not fighting is always. It should always be your first solution, either if it's if it's extinguished through words, um, or just just getting the hell out of there. Uh, it's always better than than fighting, right? Because, I mean, yeah. I mean, when I when I was a kid, I mean, when I when I was a teenager, I was I would always ask my dad, "What if the guy has a knife?" <laughs> I'm, I'm really I'm really concerned. You know, it's New York City, yeah. and I'm concerned. It's what a if fair the question. A knife? Yeah. And then my dad said run my dad said run he, he wouldn't teach me techniques to defend against that he said just a run yeah so, that's um, fair if you I was were like, my kid okay yeah yeah and then you know you know you know i you know i laid no, off the question what, yeah. for, for like a while and then like a few months later i was like okay seriously what if you know you know what if i have to defend um my wife or you know something like that what if, what if i'm with in, I'm in a situation where I can't run. It's like, okay, uh, hopefully it's winter and you can take up your coat and wrap your hands with your coat. So you use that to block. I was like, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> you know, otherwise I'll run. So, well, so Wind Chun is not necessarily meant for uh, taking on or defending or attacking multiple opponents, but might that be a Maybe. side effect that it is? I mean, I mean, I, I well, think like, it yeah, is one it's of those more of that, a side effect, that... right? Or is that uh, another primary purpose of uh, a primary purpose of Wen Chun? Is it meant to allow you to maybe defend against multiple people at once, or is that just a side effect of Wen Chun being Wen Chun? Um, I think, I think it, I think um, styles, yes, styles like Wen Chun and say Krav Maga. Are one of those styles that are practical enough for you to possibly take out, you know, multiple opponents? Obviously, always right. run, but right, right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, but but it is one of those um, things that are over exaggerated in movies, like like uh, those 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 uh, Hitman movies where you're fighting ten people. Um, but but yeah, it is it is a very efficient. There's 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 a lot of you know dirty shots, you know chopping chopping the throat. You could you could kill a person instantly. Because that's um, that is what it's meant to be for. It's for the smaller attacker who might be otherwise at a disadvantage. It is yes. really just about yes. I have to win, which yes. is, might be Again, why it's was, incorporating uh, multiple people. Right. So I have a right. question. I live in London and it's. It actually happened to me before that I had mice in my house, in my kitchen. Would you actually advise for me to get a step ladder and just like jump Slam on them? them into the ground. <laughs> 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 and then yeah. and then afterwards exclaim, it was when Chun Derek told me to. <laughs> it didn't have a knife, so I didn't Go run. For <laughs> Go for it. Totally. Yeah? Like I have your blessing? Yeah. That's a okay, sanctioned. I'm gonna send you the disgusting pictures. The sanctioned response. <laughs> yeah, are, are you wearing shoes? 
Kooky. I mean, in an ideal case, I would wear shoes everywhere in a house with mice, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Even in the shower. <laughs> like, military boots. 20 hole punches. Have Aren't they, like, super fast, though? I mean, London mice, they don't really bother anymore, because they're like, we're everywhere, what are you going to do about it? When China's supposed oh, to be okay. fast, is it faster than the mouse? Right. If, you train, I mean, if you've trained well enough, if you're Derek, screen, then yes. It's super slow. That's true. <laughs> but the mouse also has a broken bottle, so... Oh, and yeah. And he's been drinking. <laughs> yeah, what's the story behind the mouse having a bottle? Like, why do you go like, yeah, mouse, like, obviously a wine mouse? I mean, just to say again, these are actually rats. We we discussed that later on with the team. <laughs> yeah, but... they are tech. Yeah, they are technically rats, but they look. Yeah, I mean. I mean, we still say jailbreak mouse. They're technically rats, but we just don't care that much. We're not that specific about it. Yep. Oh, uh, why he has a bottle? So, so the reason he has a bottle is because um, is we want to do this whole like red light district and you know alcohol marlo tonic uh, alcohol is not real yeah yeah we yeah, yeah, yeah. alcohol in our game time. we are fantasy violence exactly alcohol isn't a fantasy which is why it's marlo tonic they do have yep. spiked brass knuckles a little, little less that is yeah, yeah. actually like no 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 no. do you know these things from like kindergarten that were like tambourines but like for your hands <laughs> you're That's getting punched out by mouse oh, yeah, yeah, mice yeah, yeah. with, with tambourine yeah. hands yeah, yeah exactly i know exactly what you're talking about and it makes me hate the mice even more for for reference derek yeah. i i'm really really bad against the mice chaos or against the mice special attacks Oh, really? oh, the frantic, the frantic tap. Yeah, it's a little bit better since one of the most recent updates. But I played yeah. several months ago, and on yeah, stream. I'm not very good at that either. Oh, it was so hard. Yeah, there was a time where, where, um, where after like the first district, you can't like it was just like impossible almost. Yeah, I know. I was uh, being I, made fun of for a I long remember. time. I remember when we went down from like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was seven taps down to four, and it really, really <laughs> threw me off for like a solid week of testing. <laughs> so, um, yeah. you said you moved to Japan with your wife, who is Japanese, to presumably raise your daughter, right? Yes, yes. So, um... how's your kid taking going from somewhere like New York to somewhere like Japan? Uh it's been a huge adjustment for everyone uh including my wife it's, it's been a huge adjustment um but why I mean, did you choose that oh why oh why we come here um because uh this is sachi's uh, my wife's name is sachi uh this is her hometown and mm -hmm. she's been away she left for college you know many 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 years ago and and uh, we're just here to, you know, reconnect with her family, uh, especially her mom. I'm, I'm at, yeah. yeah, it's nice. I mean, uh, it's just it's, it's just for two years. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, okay. So you have a limit on it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on, I'm on visa. I'm on, I'm on a on a marriage visa. Oh, I see. So, how is it for your daughter? Like, how old is your kid now? She, she's four. And, oh, okay. Yep, yep. And she goes to her, you know, pre-K here, which is mm -hmm. practically free, and it's it's pretty awesome actually. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like uh, compared to New York, where, where, uh, where, where we're paying, you know, like a hundred fifty dollars a day for for her to go to a Japanese, uh, preschool. Um, it's, it's about it comes to about twenty five dollars a month here. <laughs> Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, she gets to spend time outdoors. They have they have, you know, a huge outdoor space. Um, kids are happy there. Yeah. That sounds great. They they, they 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 provide lunch, which is which is um, uh, which is planned by by like actual nutritionists. So, I have so to yeah, ask. Yeah, it's actually really convenient to have a kid here. 
Are you passing down <laughs> any of your <laughs> Are you passing down any of your Wing Chun knowledge to her? I I try. <laughs> and, and she knows some blocks. But oh, just wow. in general she she does not like learning stuff from me. <laughs> I don't know what it is about me. <laughs> but she does not she really gets uh impatient <laughs> with me teaching her stuff. Oh wow. Yeah, I mean I can relate to that. I'm super impatient. <laughs> um, yeah, hey, yeah. so she should be back in New York by the time that she starts school, right? For two yes. years. Yes. Was that part of the planning of why exactly two years? Yep. I mean, uh, well, well, the two years is because that's as long as my wife is allowed to. So, so my wife is 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 not a U.S. citizen. She's uh, still a Japanese citizen, and so she's on green card in uh, when, when she's in the U.S. So when she, so if she leaves the U.S. for for longer than two years. Um, then, then the U.S. government is just gonna say, uh, it doesn't really look like you oh, want to be oh. here, so we're just gonna oh, take your, wow. we're just gonna suspend your uh, green card, and that's, yeah, and that'll be bad. Yeah, that does sound bad. Real God, quick, it's complicated. I'm not sure how much context you can get for this, but someone in the chat is asking if you can do hamster foo on a scooter, whether that's you or Pim or just the general possibility of. I'm not sure. Oh, approach that however still... you want. Um, so, so that was the original plan. Um, we're, we're, we're actually, I mean, we, we were going to have him like, you know, during, during the runner stages, have him do some, like, you know, have, have like, uh, enemies actually attack him like physically. Um, and, and he was going to have some scooter attacks, but, but we just, we're just like, ah, uh, you know, let's just make this like a bonus stage, you know, you know, some, some, something kind of laid back you know like, like a break from all the fighting you know all the violence yeah so so we stayed away from that but nice good say i i imagine that that he could perform some answer food moves on the on the scooter like maybe he he does some kind of hop on the scooter and then and then hits you know like, like spins the the scooter right the into his the scooter. Derek. yeah yeah do you have a scooter? I, I do not, but my daughter does. That counts. Oh my god. Do you know Derek, what my next question is? <laughs> can you do hamster food on a scooter? <laughs> I, I could practice. Maybe for the next video? For the next time then. I would love to see oh some god. Derek scooter after. That's, almost... That's a huge learning curve though, because I gotta first learn how to ride my daughter's tiny scooter. <laughs> Oh, thank God it's tiny. I think that only adds to it. I was hoping. <laughs> I was really praying that it was going to be tiny. Hey, so... It's going to be so um, pissed when I bring it. <laughs> yeah, like I was going to say, like you almost broke your face doing a flip that you designed. I'm not sure how you're right. going to do with uh, improvising with a dangerous weapon. Make sure to wear some shin guards whenever you do it. And those... Those scooters hurt. I had a scooter when I was a kid, and I remember that when I spun it and it like hit my ankle, I wanted to literally die. Like, <laughs> I was like, it can't be worse than that. I know what that feels like now, and I will want it coming. I am glad my scooter days are over. Those were days of pain. I only really had yeah. one when I was like a child. Life I didn't was really more have dangerous. A, like... Yeah. Like, it, it, Austria, like I'm from Austria, from Vienna originally, and like I didn't really like scooters didn't really blow up there. Like there was like this wave where everybody wanted a scooter, and mm. like parents bought their kids scooters, um, and then like and those kids were, like, came okay. out. No, it, it was like it was like more like a, oh you know like not like I want a bike. It was more like oh I want a hula hoop or oh I want a scooter, and then you would just like ride on the playground with the scooter, and that's it. And then he got bored. And then the parents started using it because they're like, well, I bought the damn thing and started scooting to work, which killed the scooter completely because now you'd only saw like business people and like grown ass parents riding around in scooters to their job. So nobody thought it was cool anymore. <laughs> so we completely missed out on the trend. Uh, I, was, <laughs> I was a skater kid. But are scooters uh, skaters? Say one more. Uh, Technically, no. Technically, no. Yeah, right? Like, they're the nerds. The skater kids are the nerds? 
No, the scooter kids are the best. Oh, I was about to say. The scooters are yeah. the haters. Scooters get a lot oh, of hate. I wanted to be a skater kid so badly. Like, I got my uncle's, like, He-Man skateboard. But, like, all I could do on it is, is lie on it and roll down a hill. <laughs> like a dead seagull. But I had a lot of momentum. <laughs> I, had, I had a really big accident. Um, oh, no. There was this big set of stairs in uh, in uh, downtown Manhattan. Um, and... And everyone was trying to jump down them. And I actually, I broke my foot when I landed. I, I broke <gasps> like every bone in my foot. Uh, I, I had to have four, four, four pins going, going through my bones to like keep them aligned. But yeah, oh yeah, God. after that I stopped skateboarding. Yeah, I hope you don't blame you. That would be it for me too. <laughs> Wendy thinks Pim is a nerd, asks Chicken Run. I mean like, yeah, a hundred percent. I'm it definitely a nerd. Sure. He's wearing this big old blazer yeah. jacket. Blue. <laughs> Not even yeah. red. Cool color. Oh, that's a fun question. How when you animated Pim, how old did you think a Pim was? Like what was the age you played with in your mind? Um, I always imagined he was about fourteen, fifteen. Oh really? So old. Yeah. Like, like, huh. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, not, not quite full grown, but. I see. Interesting. I thought he was like nine, like a solid. Oh, nine. really? Yeah. Like really? to me, he read like, he read like, I don't need to listen to grandpa. I want to ride on my scooter and do cool tricks. I don't want to like learn the yeah. boring stuff. And they would stomp home. And then we changed his character arc to be more like willing and accepting to take hamster food on, right? There was like a big change in how we wanted him to be and act. But yeah. uh, in my heart of hearts, it'll always be that Pim is like, no, screw you. I want to ride my scooter. I don't even know what I need that stupid martial arts for. And then like rescuing grandpa is like the rediscovery of, oh, it actually had sense what grandpa was trying to teach me when I was like just trying to play Game Boy and roll my scooter. <laughs> Just to teach him a lesson. Yeah. And like, he has yeah. to get Grandpa back. But really, I think Grandpa and Malo are lovers. And uh, like, Grandpa really, really wants Pim to get to know Malo. But um, he doesn't think Pim is quite ready to accept that because Pim is not been receptive to anything that Grandpa has been saying so far. So, Malo is kind of like a gym rat, kind of, or a gym chinchilla in this case. Um, he really, really loves his spinach juice and his vegetable juices, and he's appalled moving to Amsterdam that all these kids eat is just like one French fry they basically live in. Um, and so Mal is trying to push this melatonic and go like, oh, it's it's good for you, it has so much fiber. But these hamsters have been living on the junk food diet for so long, they literally cannot digest this much fiber anymore. Like their biology has changed over generations. So they're all like completely loopy, digested, like bloated, <laughs> they can't deal with it. And they're like, oh my God, what's in this melatonic? Some get addicted to it and actually start working out. And um, yeah, like, that's the story. While Pim is trying to like, cap, like, get Grandpa back. In the end, it's like, hey, Pim. So, so is Marlo tonic kind of like a workout shake? Yeah. So sure. you know, if you're not working out, like lots of the hamsters aren't, then you know it just kind of gets you drunk and loopy or uh, overweight. But if you are working out, it turns you into these buff rabbits yeah. and these nice thick mouse that are super fast. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Go off. And evil. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, they're not evil. They're just, like, vigilant about working out. Yes. Like, they just really, really want to work. You know, like, these people that go, like, almost are slightly aggressive about, like, how much they love the gym. Another <laughs> just, take like, is okay. that they're helping train Pim to defeat Marlo. Yeah, not defeat Marlo. I just think that Grandpa really, really wants to see if Pim has actually been listening all along, right? Mm. Yes. Like, he's like, did he even listen to me? And he's like, oh, throw a few guys at him. Like, he's like, yeah, I can hook him up with some guys from the gym. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to scare him a little bit. <laughs> and Matt is like, my body's a temple. It crushes these spinach juices. He's a strong man. <laughs> Throws Classic strong hamsters. man. Yeah. And like, I mean, the hamsters look so happy when they get thrown. I think they go like, me next. <laughs> <laughs> Like imagine, it makes me crack up so much. Like imagine having like 
an enemy throw you a victim like literally throw a victim at you and your first instinct is like oh great i can use this as a weapon <laughs> and throw them you like, throw them back <laughs> nope. that, was, that was my idea by the way <laughs> throwing, throwing citizens at at the bosses that was, that was a great idea that was my idea um and, my, and the art director tim said no we can't do <laughs> Amateur citizens, they're they're not they're not freaking, you know, objects. They have feelings. They're they're citizens. You got um, it. That's why you put smiles like, on it's them. It's gonna be funny. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna make them smile, and they're gonna make mm -hmm. cute little noises, and they're gonna be enthusiastic yeah. to help. Yeah, they want to help. Yeah. I mean, the rest was history. Like, like the only way you can be the boss is citizen. Yeah, like no, I I don't like. It's not like you're throwing a citizen at them. They they are being thrown to you, almost like you're, you're free to go, and you're just like, no, you're not done here. <laughs> yeah, instead of just catching them and sending them aside, so we just could. You're free now. Toss them back. Okay. Yeah. You're already in the air. May as well be useful. Not okay. just yet, little buddy. Your job's not done yet. <laughs> It's like hot potato. Hot potato with the Simpsons. <laughs> Imagining Marlo pulling them off his back and just throwing them right back at you again. Oh you know, yeah. No, no, the that, that's the whole point. He, he's so big and like um, muscular that he can't reach them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. There we go. Oh, it's one of those like really muscular guys who can't open a coat because their arms don't go close enough together. Yeah, yeah. They can't. They can't scratch their own backs either. Oh my Jesus. god. Or pull hamsters oh off. No. Oh my god. It's almost like being obese in a way. <laughs> no, like, absolutely love it. Alright, well, it is about that time. Uh, Derek, can we count on you in the future for another lesson? Maybe on a scooter? Yeah, teach me. Yes, yes. Uh, I guess I'll learn how to ride a scooter. <laughs> but... That would be fantastic. Give me, give me, give me like a week. Sounds great. So yeah. your yeah, homework for the week is learn how to ride your daughter's scooter. Okay. And definitely record your process. Yes, please. Oh, so God. we can have a nice blooper reel. So you can so you have a video of me breaking the <laughs> My my daughter crying. <laughs> to your daughter crying. She's she's crying off like, on the sidelines while her while her dad is falling over on the scooter. <laughs> Yeah. It's for work. It's for work. Yeah. Honey, you will, will understand when you're older. Just like, why are you riding my literally six centimeters large scooter? <laughs> oh, oh well, we just got her a bike, so so maybe it's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's it about that. It's about that time she learned how to ride. Terrifying. All right. Well, say your goodbyes. Um, what do we have going on tomorrow, real quick, Wendy? It's almost like a stream's going on almost mm -hmm. all day. Yeah, so tomorrow we actually pull up the screen set the schedule. The stream. The scream schedule. I'm sorry, it's like three AM here. Oh, three twenty two. Jesus. Oh, um man. it's okay. Um so uh yeah, tomorrow at ten AM Eastern time, so that's New York time, we're going to start streaming our entire office day. There's going to be an office live camera, there's going to be um it's going to be uh us playing through every single uh, version of Hamsterdam that's out there. So we're gonna have somebody playing the Nintendo Switch. We're gonna have someone playing Steam. We're gonna have somebody playing the mobile version. Um, we're also going to have a lot of other things. So from 10, there's the introduction. At 10:30, we're doing the new trailer reveal. At um, yeah, then we're having an art talk right after that. At about 11:30, we have the Hamster Free with Derek being replayed as a bot. Um, at 12.30, we're going to start playing the Switch live from the office with some motion controls going on. I think Cameron's going to help us out there. At about 2 p.m., we're going to have the stream giveaway. At 3 p.m., we're going to have um, a Steam giveaway, not stream giveaway. <laughs> Jesus, Wendy. At um, 3.30, we're going to have Jackbox with the devs. That's going to be fun because we made hamster prompts for that. And that is hilarious. Um, at 
5 p.m. we're going to have a community hangout session kind of while playing the mobile version. Um, Akaris is going to bring his own sound effects. <laughs> um, Perfect. And yeah, and then at 17.45 ish, that's a bit very accurate, so please be a bit lax with that. Uh, we're going to just like have a little bit of a stream conclusion again. Um, going through the office again, thanking everyone for supporting us, and yeah, it's going to be and what, hopefully. Remind me what time zone this is all in. This is in New York Eastern time, Perfect. so New York time slash Eastern time. Uh, we call it EDT because it's currently daylight savings, but you might be more familiar with it being called EST, Eastern Standard Time, which right. is currently now. But that's a conversation for another time because screw time zones, honestly. The more you understand it, the more you'll hate it. I promise. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pull us off the air. Uh, say your goodbyes. Thanks for being with us, by the way, Derek. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. thanks. It was nice talking to you guys. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Absolutely. That was really fun. All right. And you said you're not talkative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went off. <laughs> All right. Be sure to uh, <laughs> join us tomorrow. We have like uh when you went over pretty much the entire day chock full of streams mm -hmm. and events and yeah. just anything that you can think of uh we'll see you guys tomorrow same place different time <laughs>
Bye. Bye.